dudes and dudettes. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is episode number 158, 158. It is raining like crazy here on a Saturday morning in end of May 2021 here in New York. Anyway, this is episode 158. Today we're going to talk about the idea that some people have that their anxiety disorder, their struggles with anxiety, is some form of punishment. Like the fact that you're struggling with an anxiety problem means that you are being punished in some way. Now, before we get into that, we kind of need to separate this to a certain extent, because there's maybe three sort of themes that come out of this, you know, when I'm asking for feedback from the community, and, and you guys are never shy about giving it to me, and I appreciate that. So when I asked about this on Instagram, the, the amount of people that answered me was astounding to me, like it was there was a tremendous response. And the responses were really broken into three different areas, right? So one of which I'm going to address right at the top. And I'm going to tell you that we're actually I'm going to address it now to tell you that we're not going to address it. One of the most common themes among all the answers that I got about when I asked people, do you feel like you're being punished? Is that why you have anxiety is as a punishment? One of the most common answers that I got from people who said yes, which was many, many, many of you is were religion or faith based answers that have to do with you know, thinking that maybe you're failing a higher power, your relationship with God isn't right, you're sinning, you're evil, you're not following teachings of your church, those sort of things. That was a huge theme. That was the single biggest theme that came out of the answers that I got. And that's a real thing. We're going to address that. But when we address that, if we're going to bring that up here on the podcast or in this community, I'm going to get some help on that one, right? Because it's a sensitive topic and I don't have a lot of experience there. And we're going to get some people smarter than me on that to get to chime in on that and, and have a hopefully fruitful discussion about it. So if you feel that your anxiety problems is a punishment or a punishment in some way, and that punishment somehow revolves around issues of faith, religion, church, spirituality, hang in there. You hopefully get something out of this episode, but we're not really going to address that here, right? We're going to save that for another time if we do that. The other issues uh, were kind of split then. If you take the other people who did not say that, it got split into two different things. Number one, there was either the feeling that the punishment was based on something that had been done. Uh, you, you did something wrong, you've lived the wrong way, you you wronged people, you committed, you know, offenses against people, your family, your friends, your loved ones. And this is karma. This is the universe. This is whatever coming back to punish you because of things that you have done that were bad things. And on the, the other half of those responses were kind of based on things that you're not doing, right? So a lot of people seem to have the feeling that their anxiety problems are a form of punishment because of things that they are not doing. They are falling short. They are failing. They are not living up to expectations. They're letting people down. So I found it interesting to see that the vast majority of responses were based on religion and faith. We'll put those aside for now and talk about this some other days. But of the other responses, they were almost evenly split between these two ideas, which I guess aren't too different, but they, it is interesting to see. And I think there is, there, there are things we got to point out between these two. Either you're being punished because of something you've done bad or wrong, or things that you have done bad or wrong, events in the past, or, <clears throat> excuse me, not failing to live up to expectations, falling short, letting everybody down. So let's talk about those two things. Let's talk about the first one. Let's talk about the idea that maybe you feel like you are being punished and your anxiety disorder is a form of punishment for things that you have done in the past. Specific events, some people brought up specific events, some people just kind of said, well, you know, I've done some bad things. And the perception is there that this problem, this struggle that you're having, whether it is the direct cause of why you now have these anxiety problems in your life, or the fact that you're struggling to overcome them and recover, is because that's that's retribution. That's some sort of karmic retribution for things you have done in the past that you consider to have been wrong or bad or hurtful or harmful in some way. Right? So that's that's kind of a guilt issue in the end, right? There, there's a combination of things going on there. First of all, you always have to remember that in a state of disordered anxiety, almost every analysis that we do about anything important to us does tend to get magnified and, and twisted. And we've talked about this a lot, right? So that's that plays a, a, a role in the escape behaviors from panic and anxiety and, and GAD and feeling that and health anxiety. So anxiety will twist things in a big way, right? So it will magnify and distort 
memories. It will magnify and distort issues. It will magnify and distort events. It will cause you to like engage in sort of cognitive errors like mind reading and thinking that you know what other people are thinking or feeling when really you don't or you haven't talked to them and they haven't talked about it. So that, that's, you have to keep that in mind. If you're feeling that you are being punished because you have a sense of guilt over things that have happened or things that you have done, you have to at least consider the possibility that in the state that you are in, you may be more harshly judging those events, those actions. You may be ascribing thoughts, feelings, and reactions to other human beings that you don't know they've actually had. You don't know that that's true, right? You don't know that they are angry at you. They don't, you don't know if you've actually hurt these people. You don't know if they you know, don't want to have anything to do with you. So you have to at least consider that. If, if you're carrying guilt over past issues, over past events in your life, and you think that you're being punished for that, your anxiety is, is part of a punishment for the, the things that you've done that you're guilty about, just consider that, that perception of guilt or the badness of those events, the badness of the things that you may have done, may be distorted and magnified by the fact that you have anxiety. So it's a little bit self-referencing, but you got to at least give yourself a chance to step back for a second and say, oh, I, I might be, there's a possibility that the way I'm viewing this right now is, is a little bit beyond what, it, what reality really is. And especially, I think one good hint that you can have there is, is this the way I've always thought about these events? Or is that sense of guilt, uh, punishment, retribution, is that growing over time, right? So as your anxiety gets worse, if you begin to feel more and more and more guilty about past events, more and more and more sure that you are being punished for them, more and more and more sure that, you know, you have hurt people or they don't like you or they, you, for some reason, they're trying to get away from you or that you've, you've damaged them or damaged the world in some way. If that feeling is growing over time, as your anxiety gets worse, then that's a good clue that says, ooh, there might be some magnif magnification and distortion going on there. So just keep that in mind, right? You're not always, when we are in a state of disordered anxiety, we're afraid all the time, and we're on like that hair trigger, we tend to judge things really harshly, including ourselves and the things that we do. So keep that in mind. That, that may help as you go down this road. On the other side of this is the idea that sometimes we do carry guilt, Right, And sometimes that guilt is based on the reality of some things that we've done. Every human being in their lives has made mistakes. We all make mistakes. We continue to make them until the day we leave the planet. Unfortunately, that's just part of the human condition. And sometimes those mistakes impact people, whether it's people that we don't even really know, casual relationships, friends, close friends, family members, people we love. Yeah, that happens sometimes. That's true. Sometimes things happen. We make mistakes. Maybe we exercise some, some bad judgment things happen that we didn't plan to have happen. That does happen, right, in life. Unfortunately, it is part of life. And I think the idea then you will take on the guilt of that and hold that and then turn it on yourself by saying, oh, this anxiety problem that I have right now, that's because of that. That's punishment. Well, I, we're going to get to that in a second because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address the people who feel like they're being punished for lack of, right, because they've let thing, they're not doing the right thing or they're falling short of letting people down. Not because they're guilty about things they've done, but it, mainly because of things they've not done or felt they aren't doing. So you guys are going to wind up, you're slightly different, but then we're going to all tie this in together at the end when I tell you that your anxiety is not punishment. It's just not, right? That's not the way this works, right? So if in fact you are carrying some guilt over some actual events that happened in life, well, just like we talk sometimes about past trauma, you know, that work has to be done too. Well, I mean, if you're guilty over certain things that have happened in your life that you now regret, and we all have regrets from time to time, sometimes you do have to do that work, right? So at the same time that you're doing the work of, of recovery toward free anxiety disorder, it's also perfectly valid, acceptable, and you are worth the other work also, which is processing that guilt going through, you know, apologizing if you need to apologize, talking to you need to talk to very uncomfortable, very painful kind of work to do. Because in the end, we can't change the past. But it, you also don't have to be a slave to the past. Right? So I think the idea that you want to say that my anxiety is punishment because of things I have done in my past. You know, it's, it's punishment in a way there's a passivity there that you don't need to have to have. Like, well, I did these things, I messed up, which we can all say, all of us can say that about ourselves from time to time. I messed up. And now now I'm screwed because see, now I'm being punished by the universe by 
karma, by whatever, higher power, whatever you think it might be, whatever reason that, that punishment has come to be. But if you're throwing up your hands and saying, well, I feel like I'm being punished because of what I did, there's a level of passivity there that says, I'm going to hand, I'm going to give up my control in this process. Like, well, these things happen. I, I'm a terrible person. I blew it. And now, now the universe is going to punish me. And that's the way this is. You don't have to say that. You know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't think that. We can't control what we think. And I completely understand if you've gotten yourself in that, to that place where you feel that you're being punished because of the guilt that you're carrying over, over things in the past. I get that. There's nothing wrong with that. The fact that you wound up there isn't necessarily a mystery or, or cause for alarm. You know, you're just a human being and you get caught up in some of those things. And that happens. We all do. But I think we have to recognize, aside from the first part that I said, where you recognize that sometimes you're, you're really seeing things through maybe a magnified and distorted lens because there's some fear and irrationality there. But you also have to look and say, well, you know, okay, maybe I can make that statement and say, man, I, I know I messed up. I don't like what I did. I'm not happy about what I did. I have regrets over what I did. I feel badly about what I did. But now what can I do about that? I can't change the past. I can't undo events. But now what can I do? I can go toward those events. I can go toward these uncomfortable feelings. I can go toward those relationships that maybe feel damaged to me because of what I did. And I can make the best effort that I can to, to process through those, to take those things on, to talk them through with the people that were involved, if they're willing to, to learn to accept maybe the grief or the shame that comes along with maybe somebody doesn't want to talk it through with you. They just can't get past what happened. Right? So there are ways to work through guilt. But the word, the operative word there is work. And I'm not calling anybody lazy. I'm not telling you that you're lazy or anything like that. But I think you have to really understand that like, well, if you view anxiety as a punishment, because you feel guilty, you know, you're kind of dropping a lot of your power and influence on the floor there. You know, there's a passivity in that you don't have to just give up and say, see, and now I'm being punished. And that's just the way it has to be. You can say, well, I have to work on my anxiety problems. I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to work on that stuff. But at the same time, maybe it's time for me to start really confronting those issues in, in a more healthy or productive way, as opposed to just sitting passively, feeling guilty, ruminating, taking no actual action. You know, that, that's not necessarily required. So I think if you feel like you're being punished, your anxiety is punishment for past transgressions against, uh, you know, other humans, whatever they may be in your life. Well, there are steps that we can take to address those feelings. So I would just point that out to you that you don't have to just sit there and just sit passively in that guilt and that regret and that disappointment in yourself. We can take some steps. It's not those are not easy steps to take in any way. And there may be no perfect solution to that, since we cannot change the past and we cannot control the reactions of other people either. So you may not have perfect resolution for these things. But taking action and working through them in as productive and a healthy way as you can manage. And that may be getting professional help for them. There's no harm in that. There's no, there's no shame in that at all. You know, it can actually change that perception. The punishment doesn't feel so much like punishment anymore. Like, oh, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm not really being punished because if you can start to change that and, and lighten the load of that guilt or at least process through that guilt and those regrets and that disappointment that you have in yourself, you can start to process through those things a little bit more productively and move forward into and through those feelings, well, then it will start to feel less like a punishment, right? If I'm feeling less guilty, if I know I've made my best effort to make amends and change things and learn lessons from those, well, then I have less reason to feel like I'm being punished, right? So consider that. If that's where you are and you think that your anxiety and anxiety disorder is, is the result of punishment because of things you have done in the past, consider that you, you may be magnifying and distorting the way you see those past events, and you don't have to make that statement and throw your hands up and just sit there being guilty or feeling guilty. You can take steps to work through those things, right? And then if you're listening to me right now and you feel like you're being punished because you are less than, you're not living up to certain expectations, you're letting people down. Some people feel like their anxiety is punishment for having anxiety. I, I've literally been told that. So some of you are in the unenviable position of feeling so, what's the word I'm looking for here, a little bit less than or unworthy, that just the idea that you, you wound up with an anxiety problem is a failure. And now the anxiety is punishment for that weakness showing up in your life. So this isn't about being guilty for things you have done. Sometimes it's feeling that you're being punished for not doing the right things. So it's almost guilt by by lack, right? Guilt by falling short. 
like, well, I should be stronger. I'm being punished for not being stronger. I'm being punished for not having stronger fiber. I'm not, I'm being punished for not being a warrior. I'm, I'm being punished for not being as strong as my dad or my mom or living up to some ideal that, that was given to you, handed to you, right? So this starts to get into some of that inner critic stuff that we've talked about before. And we talked about that a couple of podcast episodes ago with Josh Fletcher. We talked about the inner critic. So you may have adopted some beliefs about yourself based on things that were handed to you and taught to you directly or indirectly in your past that have led you to believe that just the fact that you may struggle with fear, uncertainty, vulnerability, anxiety from time to time is reason enough to be punished. See, I'm weak. I, I'm weak. This is, this is the universe. This is whatever, like going after my weakness, highlighting it, punishing me for being the way I am. I've had some people say that they feel that they have not lived a, they're not living a life up to expectations in terms of ethics and morals. I should be living to a higher value and I'm failing to do that. And this is part of my punishment is that I feel this. Like this is the universe rubbing it in my face that I cannot attain this, this high moral, ethical, and value standard that I set out for myself. That's a tough place to put yourself in. Right? That's a really difficult place to put yourself in. Being in a place where you think that you are being punished karmically by the universe, by higher power, whatever you want to call it, because you have somehow failed to meet the minimum requirements that someone told you, and therefore you sort of took on yourself for being okay. You're not meeting the minimum. In the inner critic episode, we talked about that. You know, the inner critic is that voice that tells you that you are not meeting the minimum standards for okayness at life. And some people will take that further and say, well, not only am I, you know, failing at that, but this is my punishment for failing at that. This is my punishment. And just like we talked about just now for people who feel like they are being punished because they're guilty about the past, the same rules tend to apply, right? So now you guys start to converge again. And you're going to converge again even more in a couple of minutes when I get to the final point in this episode. But if you feel that you're being punished because you are less than, and this is the universe or some power exposing that and punishing you for not living up to your expectations or not living up to your family's expectations, not being strong enough, not being virtuous enough, not being of high moral fiber, of a strong constitution, if you think that about yourself... Well, those are things we can also work on, right? So that's a, sl that's a different kind of work than the exposure work and, and things that we talk about in terms of recovery from disordered anxiety, but work nonetheless. And, you know, Josh and I talked about that in the Inner Critic episode. But again, you don't want to really live in that passivity that says, well, I'm a failure and this is my punishment and that's just the way it is. I, that's a distortion. And in a way, in both cases, whether you're feeling that you're being punished out of a sense of guilt or a sense of lack or lacking or being less than or a failure, in both cases, the fear of your disordered anxiety will kind of push you into that passive thing. I don't want to feel like this and I don't want to be punished by, by my anxiety, but I also don't want to do the scary things. So I'm doomed if I do and I'm doomed if I don't, right? If I go and start to move toward recovery... That's really uncomfortable and hard. So I'll just sit here because I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to be scary. But when I just sit here, then I'm stuck in the passive sort of like victim space where I feel like I'm being punished and punished for things that I've done in the past or that I'm not doing, but I can't, but I'm not going to, I'm actually not going to move out of that either. So it's a, it's a bad place to be. And in this situation, I think regardless of which side of this, you know, this issue, you kind of fall, whether it's punishment based on guilt or punishment based on failure, I think you have to realize that you're suffering either way, right? So it's hard to face your guilt and your regrets. It's really hard. That is hard work emotionally. It's a heavy emotional weight to carry, right? And it's hard to work through those things. Like I said, there's no perfect resolutions for those things. You know, there is no storybook ending in a lot of those things, but we can make it better and we can have more productive lives when we do that work. It's hard work overcoming disordered anxiety. If you're dealing with health anxiety or agoraphobia or OCD, that's really hard work. So there's hard work in, for, in front of you. So you do, you're kind of, you, you, you can suffer doing the hard work or you can suffer not doing the hard work. Right? So either way, you're going to have some pain, but let's pick the path of pain that at least leads to some improvement and a lessening of the pain. I hate to use the word pain, but the discomfort. 
right? The fear, the discomfort, the pain over time. So choose, choose our suffering. We should choose our suffering wisely, right? We can suffer passively and it never changes, or we could suffer actively and hope to enact some change in our lives. So regardless of which way you have come to this, to feel that you have been punished. And again, I'll throw back in, you know, if there are faith-based or religious reasons for that, we're going to address that some other time, because that's a whole different ball of wax. But realize that even in those situations, there are changes that can be made. Right? But again, all of this work is hard. I want to, I want to keep saying again and again and again, these are difficult places for human beings to get into. If you're dealing with, you know, an anxiety disorder that you've been struggling with for any amount of time, and you're struggling to make progress in your recovery, that's a difficult place to be. I, I feel you. I really do. I understand what that feels like. If on top of that, you're carrying guilt, or you view yourself as unworthy, a failure or less than, and you think that for either of those two reasons, you are being punished. And that's, that's how you explain the situation you're in. This is punishment, some sort of retribution of some kind. That makes it even harder. So you're carrying a, a big load. There's a lot to carry, a lot to have on your shoulders. I can appreciate that. But if you're going to carry, you know, a load, we might actually choose to carry the load differently or in a different direction, or at least move it along. Instead of just holding it, let's actually move it down the road a little bit and see what we can do with it. But now let me tie in here, because this is probably the most important part of the whole episode, where I'm going to tell you that regardless of where you are, whether your feelings of punishment are faith based, guilt based, or inner critic based, failure based, you're wrong. In the end, you're wrong. Like a, a, an anxiety disorder is not punishment for anything. It's just simply not. You know, the mechanics of this are, we know this so well. All right, we know this so well. So when you hear me, if you're listening to the podcast, you hear me talk about this stuff, you know, it's required. You know what the path out of these things are. It's a long road to hoe. It's difficult. It's hard. It's scary. It's taxing. We know all that, right? But the mechanism of this, this is not, this is, the mechanism comes from inside you. And I know that's a dangerous thing to say for somebody who feels like they are being punished for being broken or less than or unworthy. I do not mean to say that you're not defective. But when we look at these disorders as bad brain habits, right? Like there are feelings and, and fears and uncertainties and vulnerabilities that all human beings have. And in the case of these disorders, they just catch on and get it really sticky. And then the avoidant behaviors and, and the compulsive behaviors and the, the safety and escape behaviors kind of fuel it and, and snowball it. You know, it's like if you, your brain is learning a, the wrong, a lo wrong lesson along the way, and then you just keep rewarding it. It's been rewarded for over and over and over for that wrong lesson. So it just goes down the wrong path, it goes down the wrong path. Like that has nothing to do with the external force, right? So let's, let's uncover that for a second. The idea that somehow your anxiety disorder is punishment for whatever reason you've decided you're being punished would indicate somehow that there's some external force that, that is causing it. There's some external thing that's pressing on you, that's throwing it at you, that's pinning you down. But if we look at the reality here, that if you're listening to the podcast or you're in my social media community, you understand what I'm about to say here. If you look around you, you will see people who are sharing about their recovery, right? As they go down this road and they do these things that we talk about, they get better. I understand that some people take longer to get better. Some people it's slower. Some people it's faster. Some people struggle. Some people struggle to even get started. That's okay. Everybody struggles sometimes. But you, if you look around, you will see people talking about how they are getting better. So how would they be able to get better? And how would we have decades and decades of clinical evidence in the real world that shows that these particular interventions are so damn effective when it comes to treating the disorders that we're addressing here? How would that be? People change their behaviors. They start to do different things and their lives change. Where is the external force there? What happened to the external punishing force? Did it turn off? Did it vaporize? Is there some sort of magical thinking here that says, oh, because Jane went and drove three exits down the highway today, that somehow, you know, the gods in charge of punishing decided to turn that off? The punishment is over because she drove three exits on the highway four days in a row? Like, you have to almost call that out a little bit. Because we would not, if there is some external force that is bringing this on you and pinning you down beyond your control, you're being attacked by something outside of you that is trying to exact some sort of retribution for your failure or your, your, your failure of faith or your, your 
unworthiness or less thanness, brokenness, if some other outside force is punishing you for this. I don't know what you define that force to be. It doesn't matter. How can anybody recover then? Or you would then be guilty of saying, oh, no, but I'm being punished. They're not. The difference is the reason why this is happening to me is that I'm special and I'm being punished. So yes, there is anxiety disorders that are punishment and then there are anxiety disorders that are not, which that becomes a difficult explanation to really hang your hat on, right? So I'm guessing that if I took maybe 10 minutes and surveyed the community, which is large and getting larger all the time, and said, oh, look, you know what? Even in last night when I asked a question to Instagram, how many people think that they have, they're being punished by their anxiety? I will tell you that of the hundreds of responses that I got, there were at least 10 or 15 people, if I scroll through again right now on my phone, that said, oh, I used to think that. I used to think that. And then things changed. Whether it was their relationship with a, you know, a formal religion or just changes they made in their lives or they started viewing anxiety a different way and acting differently and doing the work or they got professional help for other issues and they dealt with their trauma. Plenty of people told me last night and even the answer is still coming in now as I record this, that they used to think that too. And now they don't anymore because now they're getting better. So regardless of how you have wound up in this position where you are struggling and think that your struggle is somehow punishment for some reason, consider that punishment only comes from some outside force pressing on you. And if that's, if that's the case, then how can things as insignificant as getting out of bed first thing in the morning and practicing your exposure or doing your ERP work for 10 minutes today how could things like that, tiny little steps like that, turn off, literally diffuse or turn off that, that external force that's meeting out this punishment? It kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? That argument begins to fall apart. But understandably, when we are in the midst of the struggle, and we've all been there, I was there too, it's hard to see these things. It's really hard to see these things. I get that. All you know is that it hurts right now. It just hurts right now you don't have a lot of ability to reason. So I'm, I'm asking you to reason a little bit here. And I do get it that that might be difficult right now. But at least for a couple of minutes, consider that. Look around, like look in the comments of the things that I post. Look in the Facebook group. Look at people that you see that, that are saying they're getting better. And ask yourself, well, why would, if all human beings have make mistakes and all human beings have frailties and insecurities, and, and, and shortcomings. We all do. All of us do. All of us do. Everyone, all the 7 billion of us have that. Well, how come they're not getting punished and I am? Right? Is it possible that maybe I'm wrong about that? And that maybe just some of my, my fear, some of that distortion, that magnification, some of the things I were taught, the lessons that were handed to me since I was a kid have led me to believe that I am being punished. But why am I being punished and the guy next door isn't? How could that be? So just take a, a minute or two when you can and consider that. Because my assertion here to sum the whole thing up is that you are not being punished. Your anxiety disorder is not being punished. You know, that would probably be a lot easier to accept as, a, as an answer. Oh, that's punishment. You know, it kind of harkens back to some of the stuff that we would ascribe diseases to certain things, you know, many, many, many years ago before we had medicine, before we had technology, before we had all this research, before we were organized in the way we handle these things, right? So that was kind of, that's kind of old thinking. And you look back and say like, oh man, remember when they used to put leeches on people to cure their disease? How crazy is that, right? That's, we don't do that anymore. Well, in a way, you know, you could almost make the same thing and say like, well, hang on a second here. We know so much more now. And I see all these people around me that are doing this work and changing their lives and getting better. And, and this crazy dude in a microphone from New York is telling me I can get better because he did it. And he sees all these people that are doing it. So I don't know, maybe, maybe now we can maybe now we know, we know that this isn't some sort of supernatural punishment, karmic punishment, whatever you want to call it, energy based punishment, I don't, it doesn't matter to me where you come from. But consider for a second that you might be wrong about that. Because I'm telling you, you are. And you don't have to believe me now, because I know that you might not. But like everything else in the recovery process, you start to believe it when you start to do things differently. So what I would urge you to do is consider the source of where the guilt is coming from. Consider the source of where those feelings of failure and worthlessness and being less than come from. So you got to consider those things and you got to consider that there are ways to deal with those things. But also just for an hour or two when you can and, you know, when you're ready for this, maybe that's today, 
just for an hour or two, act as if you are not being punished and actually be proactive and move down the road a little bit, just a few steps toward recovery. And if you can take two steps today that you were not able to take last week, then if we want to assert that there is a punishment, well, clearly you have a mechanism that you can use to turn that punishment off. So sometimes you just have to step back for a second and say, hmm, the way I'm thinking about this, the way I'm approaching this, the way I've been handling this hasn't been working for me. So maybe let me just try something a little different. And I promise you, you're not being punished because you're not broken. You're not unworthy. You're not less than. You're not a failure. And if you're carrying some guilt, then join the club. All of us are guilty about something, right? So it's, it doesn't have to imprison you, I promise. All right, that's enough of this. Like I said, there's a whole other part of this topic that, that I need to really look at because I don't really want to get into it right now. And that's the whole faith-based thing. It's because I, I cannot say enough, and I, I wanna, I'm going to be extra, extra cautious about this, that if you are, in fact, in that position where you feel that your punishment is somehow based on, on faith or religion or, or your relationship with a higher power, or your role in a church or an organized group or, or your spiritual community, I, I never w- want to say anything that would invalidate anybody's beliefs or faith ever because I don't have to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't need to do that. But I think it's probably a conversation that we should at least think about having. I've actually put a little poll on my Instagram today. We'll see what everybody thinks on that. I'm getting a lot of responses already. I know it's a hot topic, but um, we'll, we'll see we you know, deal with that down the road a little bit in more detail. And we'll bring some people in who are much more well versed in those topics, much more experienced than me, and we'll have a hopefully a discussion that will help some people if we're going to have it at all. Right. But just take a minute if you can and consider that maybe, maybe you're not being punished, and act as if you're not being punished. And there is no outside force that's doing that to you. Try it, try it like you see other people doing it. I don't care how small the step is that you take. But if it's a a step that you couldn't take yesterday or the week before, then There's a hint. There's a clue there, right? Okay, peeps. That is it for episode 158. As always, thank you for coming out and hanging out with me for a half hour or so as you do every week. I so appreciate you guys. I really, 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 really do. You'll notice that I did not mention my book. I'm not going to mention the book. By the way, my book is called The Anxious Truth, just like this podcast. And you can find that on my website at theanxioustruth.com slash recovery guide. But I really want to tell you two things before you go. Number one, if you are confused about what to do about your anxiety, you are stuck, you are struggling, you don't even know where to start, you're getting all this advice, you don't know what to do. On my website at theanxioustruth.com slash workshop one, it is a 100% totally free one hour training, video workshop training on the direction of recovery. What are the steps of recovery? What do you have to start to do? So if you're not sure where to start, that is a 100% totally free way for you to spend an hour anytime you want, go back and watch it as often as you want, that hopefully will get you pointed in the right direction, right? So I made it available free about two months ago. I think we have about 2,000 people so far that have watched it. The feedback is good. I urge you to go check that out, theanxioustruth.com slash workshop one. You don't need anything but an email address. It's 100% free, I promise. So check it out. Hopefully it will be helpful to you. And then I will leave you with the last thing that I always do, which is if you are watching or listening to this podcast on iTunes or any platform that lets you rate or review the podcast, then take a few seconds and leave a five-star rating if you dig it, or maybe write a review. Because when you write a review of the podcast, it helps other people find it. And then the audience grows, and people who need to get help can get the help that they need. I appreciate that. You guys are helping out when you do it. All right, folks, here's Afterglow by my buddy Ben Drake, whom you can find at bendrakemusic.com. He has a new website. Enjoy the song. Ben, thanks for letting me use it. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Remember, this is the way... Now you're on your way It's in the afterglow It's in the lyrics of the songs we know It's in these feelings that you never show